Let's get to it, man. 107.5 WGCI, the shot's number one for hip-hop and R&B. It's the morning show with the Destin legend, Leon Rogers. Yeah. The beautiful Kendra G. Myself, the shortest damn man in Chicago, Kyle. And we're glad to have this dude back on with us once again to talk about yeah. another season of Snowfall. Normally, he's in Chicago hanging out with us this time of year, but it's COVID season, so we got him on virtually. Yo, you got to give it up. Damson Idris is here with us today, man. How you doing, brother? Well, What's up, man? I'm good, good. Happy to be here, man. Yeah, Always man. Always a pleasure to talk to you guys, you know? Absolutely. Season four, bro. Hey. Season four. Ooh, season I know you're four. excited that it's been this successful and it's going so long, man. How you feel going, about going into this new season? It's 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 great, man. I feel great going into the season because um, aside from the, the tragedy of, of what many of us have gone through in, in the past months and, and year, um it really did help art in a way that people were able to be at home and, and just explore and, and just take in culture. And Snowfall is one of those things. And now that we're on Hulu, um, the anticipation is so great. Um, and the, the, the streets was hungry, but, but we're here to provide, man. You know, damn, so what I love about you is you're literally a friend to the show. Like before the pandemic, I, be, I remember before even the first season of Snowfall, you guys came to Chicago. Rest in peace to John Singleton. Yeah, yes, um, y'all came every year, every year to our show. So we'll always love y'all for that. But because of that, there's people that caught on to Snowfall. We've been fans since season one. Yeah, we didn't have to do no repeat shows. We've been watching since the jump. And what I love about it is it was always like power, always got conversation. But I'm like, power's good. No taking away. But Snowfall is a show you got to watch too. And I feel like now people are really dedicating it to Snowfall. And what I always said, the acting, all of you guys, top notch. Like top notch acting. Y'all play every single character to its degree. Your mother, your uncle, um, the guy that plays Leon. Like the acting is just so stellar. And I'm just so happy that everyone is finally on the Snowfall wave like they need it to be. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of the show, man. And and the journey that we've gone on, you know, this was John's vision. And I think we're truly making him proud, man. I know he's smiling down on us right now. Uh, <laughs> so I'm happy about that. And, and when you talk about the cast, man, to me personally, you know, name a more diverse cast, you know, that speaks to the times. You're saying cast? <laughs> I'm sorry, Dan. I'm sorry, Damson. That's hilarious. I, I need to say my T's on this show. I forgot you guys don't say T's. People yeah, bro. forget you're from England, yeah, bro. Brother. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. You got to come correct, right? Now, ain't it? Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. That's hilarious. <laughs> But yeah, this is this is the great the greatest cost. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, it's, it's multicultural. It's diverse. It speaks to the times, um, in front and behind the camera, and I'm extremely proud about that. Absolutely, Damson. I I gotta ask you a question, man, because I I love your character, like, and I and I and when I and I'm not just saying that because you're here, because <laughs> Franklin has a cool about him, a swag about him that's like you know not over the top. It's like right there, and I, I want to ask you. I, I be feeling like mad Denzel vibes sometimes when my man talking to people. Like it was one scene when you said you were talking about, and I think it was in season three when you were talking about making the transition from cocaine to crack. And you was like, well, we're going to go back to just selling only to high end clients. And I just felt like a Denzel watching. <laughs> who is your, who is your muse when it comes to acting? Who do you kind of like look at or some actors that you look at and, and gravitate and pull some energies from? Man, um, all, all the giants that came before me, man, I, I really am a student of, of this game. Um, Sidney Poitier, extremely. Um, when they he told me Mr. Tibbs. You no, know, you know, that charm, <laughs> man. He brought that Bahamas over here, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Denzel Washington, of course. Um, Daniel Day-Lewis, Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, okay. These are people that I really, really, like, look up to. So... Uh, they, 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 they're icons in their, in their own sense. But one thing they all have in common is they can make a small moment a great moment. And, and that's what I hope to do in my acting. And, and hopefully that's what I've done with, with this one character, Franklin. I know, I know that brick by brick went viral. So 
So I think man. I'm going to wrap up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No doubt. <laughs> I want to ask you, Damson, because your character, Franklin, we've seen his maturation from season one to kind of just being a kid, you know, trying to survive, to getting in the game, to being a kingpin, and now trying to hold it all together. Are there any parallel, any parallels, excuse me, in Franklin's growth in his character in your growth as an actor? Because, you know, at that time you were, you know, four seasons younger. Right. We talked on the show about John Singleton picking you, like hand picking you for the role, but now you're seasoned. Like are some parallels there in terms of the growth? Not the, not what you guys do for a living, but for the growth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I stopped selling crack like last year. No. <laughs> Um, uh, I say, I think the biggest thing is, um, is self-confidence, you know, I, I, John really put me in a deep end, you know, being a, a kid coming out of London and, and only, um, doing theater and like small end TV, all of a sudden I've got to, you know, be the lead on a big FX TV show. And everyone's looking at me, you know, attaching their honey wagons behind me, um, to get to where I am now as an actor, when I walk on set there's a confidence, you know, um, I, I believed I could do this and I, I believe that I'm here for a reason. I worked my ass off to get here. Um, and the cast uh, <laughs> believe that too. Um, <laughs> and, and in relation to Franklin, it's the same thing. You know, when he first started, he was really green. Um, he had no idea what he was doing. He was trying to convince everyone around him that he was the boss and that he was the one that was going to look after everyone. And now everyone agrees with him. So that's the that's the parallel that the two of us have, have gathered over these, these six years and four seasons of self-confidence. Absolutely. Well, let me say this. Um, Damson, you, yourself, I enjoy, I love. I'm also loving watching you grow as an actor. You know, I follow, we have, now we have some, you know, I see you be hanging out with Kodak Lens, Lenny S. I'm like, oh, he out here oh. with it. I knew him before y'all knew him, you know? So I love you. But I don't fuck with Franklin. Let me tell you why, okay? <laughs> Franklin got to go, okay? Let's just Dang leave it out. He got to go. Because Jesus. Franklin, done, let me tell you why. He done killed his best friend. Damn. Killed his, the girl that he fought with. His, her, her, her daddy. She should have killed Had him. Too. Had to still alive and limping. I know your mama love you, but you deserve a bullet to your head. So I know we can't have it right away. Cause you were part of the snowfall, but and it has to end with you guys. All my DMs right now, man. It's just, you, all my DMs are destroyed. Now. Franklin is a cold hearted. <laughs> yeah. He only cares about the money, and it's gonna be right. interesting because I feel like right. this season. But that's the drug business, and what I learned from the first two episodes, you and Leon, who y'all are gonna have a conflict, yep. and I think I, I love Leon. Leon's like like he has a good morale. He's about this business, but he also has a moral code too. And I feel like Franklin don't got that. Franklin's code is all about the money. And I know you kind of got to be that person in the yeah. kingpin, but I kind of want you to die. But like, I need the show to keep going. <laughs> keep on, oh, man. Damn. Damn. <laughs> That's the first time I've ever heard that, by the way. I know. You know, I he was the girl father. He was sitting out of Spelman. He was a good guy. He said he was going to Spelman. You're going to kill the daddy. You got to go, Franklin. I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to tell you what they won't tell you. <laughs> it's it's interesting when you talk about a morality and, and, and ethics, you know, that's something that the writers have done brilliantly on this season, and you're gonna see it. Um, everyone who does a vicious act, there's a direct um challenge that they face because of it. And whether that's a nightmare, whether that's PTSD, um, but what I believe it is is the truth, you know. A lot of people feel like gangsters are just cold-hearted and evil and they could just do all these things and not feel any type of way. But I know personally some real gangsters who, who had some real dark nights and who regretted a lot of the stuff that they did. And now they're living with that um, through a rehabilitation. And I just feel like when you talk about the situation with Franklin, whether he should die or not, um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the truth of the times. You know, you need to remember that everyone in that time didn't know what 2021 was gonna be. Um, they didn't know that you was going to be able to walk down Skid Row and see absolute madness. Uh, and they were just thinking about the times and, and having an opportunity to get their families out of the, the positions that they were put in by the government. And, and, and that's a deeper thing. I think when you talk about who should die this season, who's right and wrong, the audience for the first time, like yourself, are going to be really torn. You know, Franklin, before he could do anything and you love him and you ride with him to the end. But this year, 
there's more characters like Andre um, who are actually coming in trying to do the right thing. Viewers shocked me because I remember Push, P Push T is my guy, you know, he was, he was like, Andre gotta go. And I was like, <laughs> yo, he's trying to save his community. Like he's yeah. trying to his right. door up. And, and, and so this season, I want, when you talk about morality, I want the viewers to have morality too. I want more viewers talking like you. And, and I, I want, I want a, a real debate to happen so we could, we could look at how we could better fix our communities and fix this yearning that people in our communities have with getting into the drug business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, come on now. I mean, push more like Franklin than he is Andre. Man. Let's <laughs> <keep it real. laughs> Listen to Clips music, man. Hey, so I got a two part question for you. One, I heard at one point in time you were quite the badass on the pitch, mate. I, oh, I heard man. you was nice with it as a footballer. And <laughs> how true is that? And two, what is the groupie game like in the UK now that you oh here getting this money? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> well not because I mean y'all the, the accents already turned me on. Man, them girls over there thought, man, what is it like now, bruv? Please, uh, bruv. I want to uh, take some classes. So when I go uh, over there. <laughs> oh man. You know, football, um, soccer as you guys call it, man. That was my first love, man. I, I really, really wanted to make it, man. Same way. Many people out here get into ball, you know, from the beginning. Um, that was something I was really pushing. And when I hit, I'd say around 1920, um, I looked at who the best player in the world was at that time. In my opinion, it was Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. I was like, man, these guys are way better than me. I need to, I need to become a lawyer or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and then I went university, and then that's how I caught the the bug of acting through a fellow castmate. Um, but to, to just be on this journey today, man, it's, it's extraordinary because I've seen it. You know, I remember seeing Jamie Foxx talking in the, in the Hollywood Reporter. He said he performed in a little bar and his teeth was all messed up and, and he was trying to talk to these girls and they weren't interested. And then as soon as he performed and he got back off stage and they saw oh, that everyone loved yeah. him, they were like, oh, and look at your beautiful teeth. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and it's interesting because... Um, because I, I feel that today, but it's about taking that responsibility, man. Always being respectful, always being a gentleman first. Um, and, and that's the, the light I walk in, man. My, my two older sisters and my mom would, would slap the hell out of me if I if I dared disrespect any of those quote unquote groupies. So. Oh, okay. Quote cool, unquote. Uh, cool. So, so cool. be a gentleman, be a gentleman, <laughs> be a gentleman, be nice, and then GTD. Oh Get the drones, dog. Get the drones. Uh, Kendra, Kendra, you hearing this? This ain't me. This is them. Kendra work with us every day. She know what this she is. She got to hear that every day. She got to hear that every day. Every day. This is why, well, you know, I asked you, like, did you get anybody pregnant during quarantine? Because look, you out here. Look at it, Zill. This is where I, I'm enjoying your star growing. But with your star growing, there's more girls that are like, oh, and you are truly talented. So nice. you like, deserve to be in these circles. Just strap up, dog. Oh, <laughs> oh, don't oh, get nobody right there, Samson. Unless uh, you're beautiful. Unless you're really beautiful. Like, oh, man. No, no, let, me real, let me reel it back. Black, like you buy black. I'm just Hold on, hey, Cal. <laughs> hey, Cal. Yeah. Hey, don't tell him that, man. Hey, damn, Samson. Hey, black as you buy super black. Bad, if she's super bad, raw <laughs> is low. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love you guys, man. <laughs> I love you guys. Bro, it's loud, bro. If she bad. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna, I wanna come back to something that you said earlier, uh, Damson, really quick. Nice when you were talking about, huh? No, nice it's choice not. Of words. Yeah. Oh <laughs> my. <laughs> this guy. Uh, now I wanna come back to what you were saying earlier about like the characters that were, um, you know, like your character uh, and everybody in the show dealing with what's going on in the '80s and not knowing what 2021 is going to be like. Well, some of us remember the 80s, right? So everything that you guys are doing on the show, we're old enough to like, yeah, I remember. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we're now we're here now and we're old enough to see the effects of what took place in the 80s. Was there anything that you were exposed to in the in the filming of this show that kind of connected the two dots for you? Um it it was it was Wanda, man. Wanda Bell's character, um Gail Bean. And, and Rain Edwards, who plays Melody, that season three, episode seven, was one of the most powerful episodes for me because these are two young women who were introduced to in the show who just came in, you know, one like Leon, the other one like Franklin. They were just normal young girls. One wanted to go to Spelman. And, and, and just seeing 
this drug absolutely decimate everything they held close to them. Um, that was that was eye opening for me, and and then and it, it gave me a calling to see how I could give back. You know mm -hmm. how I could how I could help some of these communities with the platform I have now um, through my art. Uh, through my wallet, um, <laughs> right. through being on the front lines. Um, I always stay downtown for a reason um, when I'm in LA and when I'm filming the show, because just just seeing Skid Row, man, the weight of that and that responsibility um, that we as people have for, for some of the people that have been left behind in our communities. Uh, it, it's, it's deep, it's deep shit, man, but it's, yeah. it's something that we're all responsible for some way or not, whether you sold dope or not, whether you ever called somebody a chicken head or a crackhead, whether you ever laughed at someone, um, whether you ever felt that you was better than someone because they was a victim to this drug, it's time that we all start seeing crack and, and that epidemic as a health crisis, just like we see the opioid crisis and exactly. stop seeing the criminal one. Thanks. You know what? I wanted to ask you, I know you have a, um, a camaraderie with, um, I'm not sure if you saw the movie Judas and the Blacks, um, Blacks, Oh so yeah, I, 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 that's I my brother. Yeah, that. I've seen it probably five times. Yeah, so <laughs> so Lakeith Stanfield plays, you know, not a liked character, and he talked about he wrestled with playing him because you know he didn't really necessarily always agree with the character is playing, but he had to find a way to humanize him. Do you wrestle sometimes? Like, what are your thoughts of Franklin? Do you think Franklin's a good guy? Do you think Franklin is making the right choices? Do you think? Or do you like look at Franklin and like, I can't, I would never do this. I think he's ruined his community. What are your personal thoughts on the character that you portray? Wow, man, that's such a good question. Um, I know I'm a journalist for real, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, every day, man, every day I put on that costume, every day I, I grow out my Afro. Uh, <laughs> um, I, 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 feel, I feel that responsibility um, of, of so many of those, those young guys who were who were victim to this drug and a victim to the to the American dream, a victim to the dream of making money through drugs. Uh, period. Um, aside from the crack epidemic, coke, uh, uh, weed. Um, well, weed we, was a different conversation now. But but um, but uh, yeah, heroin, don't, don't don't mess with weed. Leave weed yeah, yeah, I ain't, I ain't gonna talk to that. <laughs> <Thank you so. laughs> but um, but but it's true though. Everyone that dibbled and dabbled in that are all. I'm, I'm, I'm portraying them, you know, and, and I have a responsibility to be prestigious and respectful uh, to the reasons they got into it. So I would never condemn them. Um, and, and just being a man I am today, I know for a fact that Franklin didn't get into this for, for a chain and, and a flashy car. He doesn't have one. In season four, he's still got that Casio watch. He ain't rocking the Rolly yeah, um, yeah. unless he's got a suit on. <laughs> and um and, and the, the true reason why he got into it was was for the right reasons. Um, but now uh, there's no going back. So so I think that's the, the struggle um, I'm having with Franklin today. But while I'm still in it, uh, the beauty of the writers and the creators and, and the story in general is is deeply rooted in, in ethics. And Franklin realizing at the end of season three that while he was hurt, the bloods and crypts have risen and and the community's in ruin, and he's the only one he feels can save it. So that's what he's being driven to do this season. Um, and, and that's why I'm still holding on to, to his conscience with this character. Damson, um, to piggyback off what Kendra said and <laughs> asked you, even when you play a character, there's still some research that has to go into it. Can you talk about, if any, the parallels of you look at the dope game here in the US and a lot of us, because some of us, especially people of color, have never been across the water to see our brothers and sisters that mm -hmm. are over there. Can you talk about some of the similarities in the hoods in the UK, where I'm pretty sure you've probably seen stuff happen similar to what you're portraying in South Central Los Angeles? And 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 is, is it the same or is it a little bit different across the water or like, the world is a ghetto, like and to quote <laughs> a famous song, like, you know what I'm saying? Ghettos are pretty much the same. <laughs> it's interesting, man. It, it, it's it's crazy how similar it is. And when I used to talk to Singleton and Dub C, it was like, really? That, that's what you went through? Your pops weren't around? Really? Right, right. Because <laughs> <laughs> we don't get the, you know, the UK, y'all. Nope. Ten crumpets, y'all doing it, nope. you know, y'all, yeah. You know, like, 
Like, what, really? Like, what, they had crack in your neighborhood? You know, your, your mom had to work six jobs. What, there was there was five different carpets in the living room, really? What, the, you didn't have curtains, really? Like, the what, the oven was in the, the living room? Really? Wow. Like, that's that's the reality, you know? And and that's why I was able to, to connect to this character so deeply because I know so many guys, so many Franklins. My brothers were Franklins, you know? I'm the youngest of six for a reason, and I'm on this path um, for a reason. It's because I learned from their mistakes. Um, it's, 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 it really is global, man. It, it really is global. And, and the sooner we see that, the sooner we, we share in each other's cultures, the stronger we're gonna be. Um, so yeah, man, growing up in Peckham was exactly the same. And, 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 and for that reason, I think that's why I'm able to connect to the story even, even stronger. <clears throat> Mm. Um, recently, uh, of course, we Kendra brought up Jesus and the Black Messiah, and I know Daniel. Cal- Judas, huh? Judas. What did Judas. I say? Jesus. My bad. Yeah, Jesus yeah. didn't tell Jesus on nobody. Cal. <laughs> <laughs> he's not telling nobody. He's Judas. That's you funny. Read uh, your funny. Bible. Right. <laughs> Judas and the Black Messiah. Right. <laughs> and we know that Daniel Kaluuya had to play Fred Hampton, of course, and him being from England as well. But he got a little backlash at one point. When people mm-hmm. were saying like, yo, why is this, you know, dude from England coming over here playing a black American? You know, mm-hmm. uh, why won't we have somebody that is and had the black American experience play that role? Have you caught any similar feedback or has it been all good for you? I've, I've been really fortunate, man. And um, and and with, with with these situation, it's just because of misconstrued um, language. You know, uh, as black people, we, we struggle to communicate. Um, we struggle to articulate ourselves That's something we're just learning. Everything many of us are doing today, we, we couldn't do 10 years ago. It's a new thing, you know? Yeah. And I think it's it's shocking to everyone. And, and it might not be like this forever. You never know, it could switch up. Um, but we need to enjoy the moment and, and focus on the unity of the moment. Um, because if one rises, we all rise. That's what I always say. Come on, I, talk to D, I talk to D every day about, about these type of topics. I think I was fortunate because, um, you know, I, I, I asked Idris Elba, I was like, yo, how, when you did The Wire, like, like, did you walk in, like, and, and was you, was you British when you walked into the audition? He was right. like, no, nah, I, I was straight up string a bell, man. I was just, I walked in and, and I had the New York accent. They didn't even know I was British, but because of social media today, right. um, you know so much about the actors, but, but we need to remember that that's not what acting w- w- was rooted from, you know, acting was about mystery and, 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 and not knowing where someone's from and transformation and, and the, the celebration when you finally realize what that guy who's playing a British person's from South Carolina. Right. What? <laughs> like, like, that's something to celebrate. That's, that's fire. That's, that's entertainment. Um, and, and I was fortunate because no one knew until probably season two or three that I was British. Mm. Um, and and because I had so many co-signs, it's it's hard to it's hard to 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 say, oh, Damson Idris shouldn't be playing Franklin when 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 Snoop Dogg's coming out saying shut the f up, <laughs> you know? When YG saying nah, he sound like he from here or when right. game, you know, like it's 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 very very difficult to do that. And and going forward, that's what it's about. It's just about those co-signs. People aren't respecting the fact that. That this man's son, um, Fred Hampton's son, co-signed Daniel. That should tell everyone to just be quiet. The same way Singleton co-signed me. When when someone who's deeply connected to that co-signs that person, everyone else needs to sit back and just enjoy the show. And that, and that's and and when when he picks up that Oscar, I'm sure everyone's gonna <laughs> gonna eat their words. Word. He already got the globe the other day, even right. though they even though they tried to mute him. Uh, <laughs> he already got the globe so I know more awards are coming and because of that uh, I know we're all going to rise together because one wins we all win no right. doubt. Um, before, I'm not sure how much time we have left but just real quick the last time I saw you in person you might not remember because you always you know run into people it was Baller alert. it wasn't Baller it was alert. it wasn't last year because we were in COVID but the year before that BET Awards weekend and it was at Terrence J's party it was um at we were on a rooftop. No, which it was good. It was. Oh, I was there bad. that night. I was there that yeah. night. Yeah. Was nothing, not, not, nothing bad to reporters. Nothing. At least I didn't see anything. Good, good, good. Not, but I'm leading to that. 
How come I don't see anything? Like I follow you on Instagram, you don't follow nobody. It's just your black face that you post every day. Where the girl you dating? I know you dating somebody. Where's she at? Why is she in the IG story? Client, Why client, do not that? answer that. As, how, as Damson's you lawyer, do not answer that. That's your face on your page. Damson, as your lawyer. Do not answer that. Damson, as your lawyer. I like that. Actually, I have my right to an attorney. I like that. Damson, as your lawyer, I'm going to advise you not to answer this question. I like that. Actually, my Fifth Amendment. Okay, but how are you? I will say this, though. How are you maintaining your privacy? Because you're one of the few actors who I don't really know too much personally about. You know, even when I saw you out in public, you were still moving like Franklin almost. Like, it's like, you know how to move, but you probably would have had five girls in a club. I wouldn't even know. Because you move so smooth. So how are you learning how Damson, to move? Damson, once again, so once again, privately? once again, Damson, you do not have to answer that. Do not, she's, the, the council is very slick on how she gets you, gets my, the information my, out. My you lawyer, answer. Leon, says I shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, it's it, it's this it's just about following in the footsteps of the OGs, man. There's people I respect, you know, uh, Morgan Freeman and uh, Denzel, like I said, Poitiers. I didn't know about them either, you know. Um, I, I had to dig really deep to know that that Denzel was 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 best friends with Lenny Kravitz. It's just that's not something people know, you know. Um, and and that's how I roll too. And f thankfully, the people I roll with roll like that too. You know, we ain't. We ain't whipping out cameras every two seconds. We're, we're trying to, to keep uh, the public eye. Um, um, we're protecting it because um, we know there's a lot at stake right now. Like I said, this is the first time we're doing this on this magnitude. And, and so many of us are doing it together. So we just don't really want to jeopardize uh, that light. Um, with, with, with regards to, to women, um, Once again, Damson, you do not have to answer <laughs> the question, sir. Do not have My to lawyer, Leon, question. says I shouldn't comment on that. Okay, no, no, I want to hear what you're going to say. The ladies watching, you know, in regards to women, you can finish the sentence. A day in Damson, it just is quite secret and, 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 and private, um, out of protection for both of us. Um, we see it every day today. You know, people um, put their relationships out there publicly and then they have to um, <laughs> deal with the mess when it, when it crumbles publicly. Exactly. And, and, and that's, that's not something I want to do for myself. And that's not certainly not something I want to do for any woman. So, so that's why I keep it private. Okay. Man, so <laughs> you think good. I'm gonna leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> He's sweating too. Look, like you I know I'm wiping my forehead, but lawyer Leon, did I do good? <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah, just, thank you, thank I will you. remember if she's beautiful for all his life. Um, <laughs> So, so on, on the show, man, I saw a couple of my uh, comedy homies on there. My man, Red Grant uh, in the Biker Club. And of course, uh, Chicago's own D-Ray Davis, who is doing a hell of an acting job because he is no way a killer like Peaches. I know <laughs> way, shape or form. You can tell him I said it. He needs a Golden Globe. What is it like being on set with them guys, man? Because I mean, the, the, sometimes the subject is so serious and y'all going back on for some acting stuff. What is it like to have them on there to provide levity or who else on the cast uh, yeah. provides levity and, and, and comic relief sometimes? I'll throw Eamon Joseph in there that plays Uncle Jerome, man. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, he's fine. And uh, Alona Bookbull, who plays Arvi. Um, all these people just just make the day more fun, man. They remind you that, it's, that although we have a responsibility, it's not too serious. You know, this is the entertainment industry. And like your mom told you when, she, when you were doing whatever you was doing with a kid, remember to have fun. You know, and that's and that's what we focused on, the fun of it. That's what Singleton created. That's the environment we created. And that's why Singleton brought in people like Red and, and D-Ray, because there's there's humor in reality, there's humor in darkness, there's humor in everything. And and having those people around me are amazing, especially someone like D-Ray, because you know, when I first came to LA, I didn't know anyone. And I didn't know about the clubs or anything. And D-Ray was the first person that would have me. <laughs> In his section, um, I'll be the only guy there. Stop talking, stop talking, Damson. Stop talking right now. Leon, Leon, stop talking. My lawyer, stop talking. Because I know how D Ray get down. Stop talking, please. Stop talking. That's my brother. He was the only guy in the section. What else happened? What else happened? You do not have to ask that. See, see. My lawyer, Leon, said that's the right now. Oh my God. D Ray's calling me right now. He said that's the. She got the Carmen San Diego hat on. She got the Carmen San Diego hat on, dude. She gonna uh, get you. Be cool. You know, D-Ray don't get. 
Uh, D -Ray, but he's he's D Ray don't care. That's the problem. I don't want my <laughs> client associated. But, but the point is, he embraced you early on when embraced you got me. Yeah, introduced me as a, a you know as as a star already. You know, and 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 told people, hey, this is this is going to be the best actor in the world. You know, he would say that. Um, he really believed in me, man. And and it's funny, a lot of people don't know, but D Ray was actually Uncle Jerome in the first original pilot. Wow. wow. And then um. And then it, everyone was recast. And then, and then when we got to season two or three, me and Singleton, we were, we were looking at this character, Peaches. And, and a lot of people read and a lot of people were great, but we were like, yo, this is d -Ray. And we made that happen, man. And now, and now he's shining through it. Um, and, and you're going to see a lot of him this season. Yeah. Well, look, man, we're proud of all of y'all. You know what I'm saying? So keep doing the things that you're doing. Season four is off to a good start already. Yes, sir. Uh, we're happy to be able to talk to you each and every year. Don't stop coming in here. You know Never what I'm saying? Brother. When you start getting these bigger roles, man. Please, I'm man. Never. I'm there, man. <laughs> when you accept that, when you accept that, that Oscar, you know what I'm saying? Don't That's right. I like, about my, I like people, to man. thank the Academy and thank my, my, my lawyer, Leon. <laughs> yes, sir. Appreciate that. <laughs> I like to thank the cost. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's and right. Then, <laughs> tell them, tell them, remember, fellas, if she beautiful, what's the law? Raw. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> Thank no. you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, uh, no, Idris. Snowfall season yes. four, man. We're proud of you. We appreciate you, bro. Yes. Keep doing what you're doing. And we look forward to talking to you again, man. Keep up the good work for real, for real, yo. Bless yes. you, man. Bless no you. Doubt. Peace, Damn, black man. Peace, peace brother. <laughs>